what is crackalackin kids out there? Crackalackin is what they say. What's happening, kids? New Age Revolution, Jason Up down here in the cave for a Wednesday night video. That's right, it's Wednesday. It's 7 o'clock p.m. It's about an hour away from Dynamite, AEW Dynamite, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, I was gonna... So today we're gonna take a closer look. We're gonna take a closer look at some stuff. And I originally had a plan for a closer look episode. We'll save it. Uh, I was gonna do a closer look at 80s kids TV trays, right? Because uh, I have a bunch of those, and I wanted to talk about them, and what I did with them, and how, you know, symbolic they are of the 80s, but they're tucked away behind stuff. So, like, there's one way up there that I gotta pull a bunch of stuff down to get. There's one... Uh, where's one? There's, like, one back in there somewhere. They're, like, behind stuff, so I gotta make a big mess to get them, and I didn't... I'm running a little behind tonight, so I didn't, uh... I didn't do that episode, but... I got a couple other things sitting here in front of me. You know, these to These things uh, each have a story behind them. So they're... They're kind of like, uh... I don't know, the underrated toys of my collection... Um, some of the less talked about toys of the collection, not really, you know, wrestling figure related or G.I. Joe or Rambo, you know, nothing from like a, a line, right? These are just kind of toys, right? But, but these all have value and importance to me for the backstory. Um, so let's, let's jump right in. I'll get, I'll get maybe the more common item out of the way first. I was walking around the room looking at what I could, what I could take a closer look at. And, uh, this jumped out at me. Title match, title match pro wrestling. Uh, title match pro wrestling is for the Atari 2600. And it's got these great Zellers price stickers on it. Uh, for $32.16. This is sealed. Now, don't get excited. You know, like a sealed Atari game still only goes for like, you know, 20 bucks. It's, it's, it's not a sealed Pac-Man or a sealed, you know, I don't know, whatever, Space Invaders. It's sealed title match pro wrestling. It still barely goes for anything. So I opened it. <laughs> I opened it and, uh, you know, did some nice cut work and and got got the uh, got the game out, and we still have a sealed box. But anyway, uh, Title Match Pro Wrestling was for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and if I'm feeling up to some editing, I'll throw a video in here of of the game of some gameplay. But I might not. If it hasn't showed up yet, I might not have done it, and I'm sorry. If you watched it. Then I was inspired, and I did it. But Title Match Pro Wrestling is an awful, awful, awful Atari game, just like most Atari games are awful. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Uh, up to this point, and what I didn't know was this was actually released in, in 86. 86 or 87 this was uh, released. Uh, way late. Way late in the life of the Atari uh, so it's the first Atari wrestling game. I think it's the only Atari wrestling game. Uh, and it came out, like, during the life of the Nintendo. So I'd have to look and see, like, uh, if this was, uh, you know, one of the last Atari games made. I don't know. I don't think it is. But anyway, it came out pretty late. So up to this point, I have played Matt Mania for arcade when it comes to a wrestling game. That's it. I've only played Matt Mania. And Matt Mania was just so beautiful that, you know, uh, how could you compare? So my pal, my childhood pal, Howie, uh, during the week, you know, calls me up and says that he got title match pro wrestling. And I think his parents and my parents knew how big that was for us because I want to say like it was a Wednesday night and it was during school. And you know that you weren't going anywhere during the week uh, on a school night. Stop it. Don't, don't even... 
what what silliness are you talking? But again, the professional wrestling love affair that we had, uh, I think, again, both sets of parents realized that this was big for these children. And so I was able to go over Howie's house at like 5.30 p.m. on a Wednesday school night. And it just felt weird. Like, that's just awkward. And we just sat there on the, on the living room floor in front of the big console trying to make the best out of this game. Just trying. There's four guys in this game. Those are the four right there. Just trying desperately to make the best out of this game. And because it was our first home, uh, our first home wrestling game, right? The non Matt Mania. Uh, this was, you know, Super Mario Three, or or this was the greatest game of all time. And I think we were just like, oh, you know, the graphics and. Like, I think you can do three moves. You can body slam and, like, bump into each other. This says you can do airplane spins, bear hugs, body slams, and rope dives. Don't forget the rope dives. But it was the greatest game of all time ever, period, back then and to us. And so I've, you know, I've got a sealed, I had a sealed copy, and now I have a sealed box with a slice and some tape. Title Match Pro Wrestling, one of the, one of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'll leave these two for last. The other, uh, one of the things, this, and if, you, if you've if watched previous videos, uh, early videos, when I would do toy room tours, uh, I would talk about the Crayola Caddy. Now, this, this was so important in a kid's life in the 80s, because... I mean, my kids are still very much into coloring today, but coloring, coloring was on a whole nother level in in the '80s. Like it's, it, it was a big part of what you did for for self entertainment was coloring. And this Crayola Caddy took all of our markers and all of our crayons out of the out of the box and onto this little caddy that you would just set on your desk, and you would have all of your supplies right there. And it's all in here. I mean, this is what it looked like. And part of me wants to give this to my kids and have them set it on, like, the dining room table and do some coloring. Yeah, of course it turns, you know. But I don't think so. I, I think it'll be busted. It didn't cut... The only original that it came with was these destroyed watercolors. This is the, this is, I assume, the original watercolors. I could be wrong, but they do sit right there in that little tray. So I assume it came with these 40 or 50 year old watercolor, <laughs> dried up watercolors. Uh, and, you know, so, and, and so I had to go, I had to go and buy, you know, the replacement markers and the, you know, the 48 crayons. But of course I did it wrong and bought two boxes of 24s so you don't actually get 48 colors, you get doubles. But, you know, I was going to set this up at one point for display. There's no markers in here. There's a couple of paintbrushes. And we've got some great instructions. But the Crayola Caddy was a special thing because I would always... I, I always had like a desk, you know. That's another thing that you don't really see anymore. Um... I always had a desk in my room, and of course you can't get this back in. There we go. I had a desk in my room all the time. I had a desk, and that desk would be like, you know, I would set up the Crayola Caddy. I'd set up some pieces of paper. I would stage stuff. Right? I was a weird kid. I would stage my room. I was definitely into interior design, <laughs> my, my bedroom. So... You know, I'd put some wrestling magazines on the desk. That's where I would sit down and write my match results or my match plans for the LJNs. And so this was always on there. So the Crayola Caddy was important. And you know what's also great about this? I don't know what kind of animals we were as children, but for some reason we would always get we would always get this for Christmas. So I probably got this for Christmas three or four years in a row, which makes you wonder what what kind of destruction was I putting the Crayola Caddy through that by the end of the year I would need a new one. 
Like I could understand needing some new crayons or needing some paint, but what was I doing with the base that was destroying it to the point where I needed more at Christmas time? I don't know. But the Crayola, Crayola Caddy is an unsung hero of the toy collection. It is a beautiful, beautiful item. And it is one of the non toy line stuff that hasn't been put away in board game sump pump room, right? This stays out. This is too important. I have sent all of my board games and a ton of other stuff into that sump pump room. Crayola Caddy was never going to go there. Uh, Fireball Island is back in the sump pump room. Crayola Caddy stays out. It's just so special. There's such a special history with it. Uh, the last two things are kind of related. I think they're cousins or brother and sister. I don't know, stepbrothers. But from uh, from the company uh, Tomy, I think is how you pronounce it, Tomy, we've got uh, Strollin' Bowling. Strolling Bowling. And again, if you've watched previous episodes, earlier episodes, I talk about you know how, as a kid, I was always wanting bowling toys, bowling games plastic bowling pins of all sizes. I was such a bowling fanatic as a kid that when something like strolling bowling is out there, uh, I got I to gotta have it. And trust me, trust me, this got a ton of play as a kid. And, and it's awesome. I mean, basically, basically you, got a, you got yourself a portable bowling alley here, right? Right, you, you got a little ball that has the wind up mechanism. You connect this this piece to this piece, like so, and then you flip the little lever, and your pin's set up. There you go. I've, i got to hold it together, or else it's going to break. Yeah. So anyway, you get the point. The pin's set up. Let's get those pins set up. Yeah. So the pin's set up, and your little bowling ball travels, you wind him up, and he travels down the lane, hops down the lane, and he knocks down the pins, right? He knocks down the pins. I can't do it because the little, the little hopping mechanism doesn't work. Doesn't work anymore. But basically, basically... Strolling bowling here, he'd hop on the lane, knock down the pins, and I'm entertained. Probably, probably from the ages of five to seven or so, I was entertained by strolling bowling. And then, then they come out with bumbling boxing. I don't have the box for this, but I would love it. Uh, bumbling boxing. And I'm starting to get into wrestling more and more by this point in time. And in a kid's mind, wrestling and boxing are like, well, they're both in a ring, so yeah, I got to go with that too. I like boxing. And so this was the same concept. This one I can maneuver a little bit better. Uh, this was the same concept. You, you, roll, you, you wound up these guys. This one is still kind of working in a supernatural sort of way. You want, look at that. You, I didn't wind him. <laughs> um, you wind up these guys, which I haven't done, and they run into each other. And as they're winding, their little hands move too. And so they just kind of bump each other, and the object is to knock the other guy over. Which ends up happening because they end up stepping on each other's feet because they got these huge feet. But yeah, they, they would just, um, they would box. And, and, you know, that's kind of a ring. And uh, that's how that worked. They would they would box. Uh, true story, true story. Before I had Hogan and Andre LJNs, I used these guys as wrestling figures. Uh huh. Sure, I did. Why not? I used and my dad built me a little ring. Let's see if this actually works or is it haunted. Oh yeah. Definitely not. Could these be fixed? Do you guys know? I don't know how I would crack these open without destroying them, but can these little wind-up gimmicks be fixed? This one just spins around. But anyway, yeah, my dad built me a little wrestling ring, 
uh, out of nails and rubber bands and a platform of wood. And uh, I would wrestle these little guys. Pathetic. Pathetically in love with wrestling. Right? I would wrestle with these little nuggets. All right. So, and, and then, then you just store them away. Right? You just, you put them in here. They have their little home. You seal it up. You do the same thing with the stolen bowling. You know, you put, you put the, the pin, you put the pins in here. All right? They're in there. You put your little ball in there, you seal it up, you carry it with you, and I've got the box, which I just love. So, that's that. A quick uh, taking a closer look at strolling bowling, bumbling boxing, title match pro wrestling for the Atari 2600, and the Crayola Caddy. That's all for now. We'll see you all next time. Good night now.